A Mighty Wind, The Annals of History, by Lord Blackwater. Chapter 8 Mother, do you think they'll drop the bomb? Shortner had traveled to the Isle of Aegina in the eastern waters of the Sea of Sodomy. The voice had told her that they needed to seek out the mother. When Shortner asked what the mother was, the voice had simply told her that she was an echo of the spirits who once inhabited Cumbria in the First Age. Now Shortner found herself walking along the coast of the isle, looking for the cave where this mother supposedly was located. She was hoping this would be the last step before she could begin taking her revenge. Why do we need to see this mother? Shortner asked the voice. She is the beginning of all things, the giver of life. She will be able to answer some questions that I have. The voice replied with an air of annoyance. Questions? I thought we had this all planned out already. We take the power of Tsurishimi and we rule over Cumbria. We kill Barnaby in the process, and then I get to slap all the titties I want. It's not as simple as that. I need some answers before we can move any further in this plan. And if you don't get the right answers, what happens to my revenge? Shortner asked with concern. Your revenge will come. Don't. The voice said, trying to reassure her. Before Shartner could say another word, they rounded a bend and found themselves in a small cove. Water splashed violently against the rocks surrounding the enclosure. In the middle, about thirty feet up, stood a cave. Though it appeared to be pitch black inside, Shartner could hear the sounds of soft cooing, even from the distance at which she stood. The mother, the voice announced. The climb had been difficult, but Shartner had finally made her way inside the cave. When she entered, it was almost as if a torch had been lit somewhere inside, before it had appeared pitch black from outside, but now Shartner could see everything clearly. The mother sat atop a ledge, overlooking a room. She was completely naked. The mother appeared young and full of grace. Her long, dark hair stretched to her buttocks and glistened in the soft light of the cave. As she sat, she hummed a gentle tune. Shartner had never heard it before, but it brought her a sense of peace. On either side of her throne stood two giant staircases, each wrapped upward along the walls of the cave in a half-moon shape, meeting in the middle at the mother's throne. In between the staircases was an open foyer. It started out level, but slowly declined thanks to a half-circle set of stairs. At the lowest point lay a small oval, just below where the mother sat. And here, in the middle of the oval, sat nine newborn children, all looking up toward the mother, hunger in their eyes. Shartner followed their gaze back up. The mother had nine breasts, all of which overhung the ledge, pointing down toward the children. Occasionally, a drip of milk would fall from her teat and travel downward. As they waited for their milk, the children would push and fight over who would get to receive the white juice. The lucky child who ended up catching the drop appeared to almost instantly grow in size and strength the instant they consumed the milky prize. Shartner looked in the corner of the pile and noticed a runt. He was thin, pale, and was covered in gashes that still bled. When drips of milk came down, he didn't bother to put up a fight. Instead, he seemed completely resigned to his corner with nothing to sustain him. Shartner decided to pick up the runt and bring him to her teat. She allowed him to suckle her dragon's milk for a moment or two before setting him down amongst the siblings. Dragon's milk is known for its healing properties, the mother said suddenly. But I fear it is too late for this little one. We get nowhere in this world without violence. Love 
leaves us weak and withered. Shortner looked back over at the runt. She noticed that when the next drip came, he had leapt up high above all his siblings and caught the drip. The other children looked on in awe at his recently developed strength. He had no need to push or fight any one of them to get what he needed. We've come to ask for your guidance, O oh wise mother, interrupted the voice through Shartner. And what is it you need from me? I have children to feed and cannot be bothered for too long, mother replied without taking her eyes off her children. Do you know of the Rashini people? The voice had Shartner ask. Of course. Mother replied shortly. And their power to perform the mighty grief? The voice added hopefully. Child, if you have come to me, you certainly know of my knowledge. Please don't waste my time again with needless questions. Mother said in annoyance. Right. So all I need to know is if it's possible to obtain that power if the Rishini people are dead. Indeed. But to obtain it, you need to be at the tomb of Arnola when the Rishini life force begins to rejuvenate. Then you can obtain the power of the Rishimi for yourself. And all of the Rishimi would need to die for this rejuvenation to happen? The voice asked reluctantly. Yes. Understood. Understood. The voice replied. What was needed was now known and it seemed pointless to ask Mother anything more. Shartner gazed down at the runt as they made to leave. He had almost doubled in size since they had last looked at him. Despite his strength, he chose not to bully his siblings, instead allowing them alternating drips. Somewhere deep inside of Shartner, she believed the runt would find his way.